I was looking for some burl wood to turn and Kate over at Bullseye Turning hooked me up. Take a look at this gorgeous box elder burl. It's double dyed and stabilized. The colors are purple and red wine and it is just absolutely gorgeous. I can't wait to see what it looks like on a kit. And the kit we have is a beautiful chrome cigar kit. Here's a closer look at the blank. I have a lot of trouble with cigar blanks, so I like to mark them explicitly, lower blank, upper blank, the lower being a little bit longer. And I also like to mark my center line and uh, point toward the center line so that I can reassemble the cap and the body uh, to match perfectly. If you'd like to get some of this gorgeous burl wood, I strongly suggest you go over to Kate's website, bullseyeturningsupplies.com. And uh, when you do order something, let her know RJB Woodturner sent you. I found and marked the center of both of my blanks and notice where I marked the end of the blank where the arrow points. Here's the lower blank, there's the arrow, and there's my mark. The reason why you do this, we marked our blank where we cut it, and we marked the centers of the blank where we cut the blank. And the reason why is we'll start here, which is dead center, and drill through our blank. If our bit gets off at the other end of the blank, we're still guaranteed to get a really nice match because we start at both holes at the dead center of the blank. So this is just a little trick that helps you match your blanks much nicer between the cap and the body. I have the tubes glued into my blanks. You can see that they are just a hair below the surface. That's the way we want it because we can take this to the disc sander. We can just lightly touch this end of the blank which will square it to the tube. And if these two pieces meet up on a pin, they're gonna meet perfectly and all you're gonna lose is the width of the blade between the blanks. We now need to square our blanks to the tube. Now you can see there's about an eighth of an inch uh, before you get to the tube on this side of the blank. This side's relatively close. This was the entry side. Uh, so this will just take a little bit of touching up and it'll be perfect. Uh, this side's gonna take a little bit more work. So we'll just work with the sanding disc and the sanding jig until we get both sides right down to the tube. And you see that shiny little brass tube uh, right at the face of the blank. The blank is chucked up and ready to turn. I've got the lathe set at about 2,800 RPMs. Uh, I'm gonna be using big bend bushings as opposed to cigar bushings. And the reason why my cigar bushings are turn between center only and my big bend bushings allow me to turn between center or on mandrel. And I wanna use a mandrel in this case because I wanna turn and finish both blanks at the same time. I'm having a really hard time with my carbide cutter. It's dragging really bad. I stopped once and rotated it, uh, but I can see some chips there. So I'm wondering if this cutter has been rotated multiple times and it's shot. I think I'm gonna have to replace it with a new one. But what I'm gonna do, I ended up tearing out a little section at the end of the blank. 
Not a big deal. Luckily, I caught it and it stayed in one nice big chunk. We're going to get that glued back in there. Uh, and then I'm going to grab my skew. We'll finish turning this blank with the skew, uh, which should put us in uh, good shape for uh, getting it finished. And I don't think you'll really ever notice uh, this little chunk that was uh, tore out. For these type of repairs, you really want to use medium CA as opposed to thin because the thin is going to run everywhere and it's just going to make a big mess. Way more CA than I need. Let's slide that into place. That looks really good. Get my activator. The magic skew I was using is a really great tool. It's well suited to acrylic blanks, but I'm having a little trouble with this blank. So we're gonna change back over to our regular skew and see if we can't finish this one off and make it look really nice. Even with the activator, I evidently didn't give that CA enough time to fully cure. It is 20 degrees in the shop today, so that could have something to do with it. I don't know. Um, I'm going to glue it on a second time, and uh, we'll see what we can do. We're starting to get to the point where it's going to be tough to recover from. Let me get her lined up properly. There we go. Get a hold of that with this dental tool. There we are. Get this back in there. Make sure she's nice and tight. Lots of activator on that one, way more than I need it. Uh, I'm gonna see what happens. I'm done with this end of the blank. I'm gonna turn this end down and then we're gonna to go to sanding and see how much of that we can hide. I'm skeptical, but uh, we're gonna give it a try. I was getting a lot of chatter down here. Take a look at the waves I put in this blank. That probably contributed to what I did here. Uh, I don't know if maybe my mandrel's a little bent. I probably, looking back, uh, of course, hindsight being 2020, should have gone ahead and turned with my uh, between center mandrels. Uh, but I went ahead, since it's looking rough like this, I left it a little proud of the bushings on both ends, and we'll take care of that during sanding. I prefer to do it uh, with my tool and get a nice smooth finish, but in a situation like this, you know, we got to drop back and punt. I've got the speed turned down somewhere in the neighborhood of 840, 850 RPMs, and we are ready to begin sanding. I don't know if you saw that or not while I was sanding, but the mandrel is wobbling. So I think I've bent my mandrel. I'm going to uh, get these blanks off of the mandrel base bushings and get them on turn between centers. And we're gonna finish this pin up that way because I think we'll have much better luck uh, completing the pin. Um, I, I just don't wanna deal with that wobble. That's what killed me down here. The big bend bushings that I'm using can be used turn between center or on a mandrel. So I didn't have to change bushings. I just grabbed a drive center and a live center and we're ready for action. That vent mandrel was definitely causing some issues. Um, I can tell a massive difference when I got on the turn between center bushings. So it looks like I'm in the market for a new mandrel. But yeah, this is gonna be beautiful. 
What a deep purple. There's a white spot right there. That's in the blank. It was weird because as it's spinning, I kept seeing that white spot and I thought it was a low spot in my blank. So I kept trying to sand it out and I finally stopped and looked and it's just, uh, it's just something in the wood. I'm going to let this uh, dry for a minute and then I'm going to get it on the turn between center bushings. I'm sorry, on the uh, non-stick bushings and we'll apply a CA finish to this blank. Then we'll get the other blank on the lathe and uh, go ahead and start cleaning it up. I'm glad I left a lot more meat on the other blank. Uh, I still have that damage at the end, but um, I, th I don't think that was me. I was worried to death, but I think my uh, magic skew is fine. The carbide's fine on it. I think the whole issue was I had a wobble in the blank that I did not notice. Let me show you that blank. Here's a close-up of the blank. Take a look at this. You should never see this. And that is a direct result of a bent mandrel. So we'll get that taken care of, but uh, look how much room I have at the end. And even at this end, I have quite a bit of room, so I think I can sand a lot of this away. I'm hoping to clean it up and hide as much of that as possible because uh, it shouldn't be an issue. Uh, I think it's going to work out just fine. But let me get this one finished, and then we'll move on to the lower blank. That's really going to pop. I'm going to finish the CA regiment, and I'll be back to show you the blank right before we micromesh. My CA finish is complete. I'm going to get this over to the disc sander. We're going to resquare the ends to get rid of that uh, CA glue fingernail where I wiped over the end of the blank. And then we'll get this back on the turning bushings for some micro mesh and some polishing. I got the ends of the blank squared back to the tube and I've got it on the turning bushings. I have not micro meshed it yet. I decided to go ahead and get this one sanded down and to the same point before we go any farther because if I can't clean this up, there may not be any use in uh, putting the additional time into finishing this blank. I've only sanded with 120 and there was quite a bit of material left on this end of the blank. It looks like it's sanded down pretty far. I mean, I can still see the CA uh, because it's obviously between the two pieces, but I'm gonna clean this off with a little denatured alcohol. And we're going to see what it looks like. And it looks like there are no grooves or gaps. I think we're going to be able to finish this just fine. And I don't think you'll ever see that blemish. I mean, it just disappeared. Obviously, when I put a CA finish over it, it will disappear completely. So we're going to go ahead and continue sanding on this blank. And I'll come back and show it to you uh, once the sanding is complete, right before I put a CA finish on it. I took a look at this blank under a magnifying glass, and I can see no uh, no difference in the surface. It looks really good. I'm hoping that CA will go ahead and cover CA and that blemish will totally disappear. We're going to let this uh, denatured alcohol flash dry off the blank and we'll be back in a second to apply our first coat. All right, let's have a before and after. You can see down here, there's a little line there. That's CA glue where I glued the piece in. I'm going to go ahead now and give it the first coat of thin CA. I'm going to shut this lathe off and... Look at that. You cannot see the difference because the CA basically blends with the CA and it totally disappears. Well, okay, right there. Yep, I can see a little bit of brass tube. That's a bummer. Um, I'm going to go ahead and finish this one up, this blank, but I don't know that I'm going to press this into a kit because honestly, that's not something that I would consider um, selling or giving away. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think I'm just going to go ahead and stop on this blank. Sometimes you just have to cut your losses. Um, I hate it because I thought for sure I had this fixed, but I think that's going to be it for this blank. I think I'm going to put this one away and start on another one. Well, you win some and you lose some, and I think that's probably going to be the title of this video. Uh, I think the problem, there was no issue with the blank whatsoever. This is a fantastic blank. And I would turn one of these again in a heartbeat. And as a matter of fact, I have another one over there on my bench uh, that is orange that I'll start working on. The issue with this one was instead of turning between centers from the get-go, I tried to turn on a mandrel. And you could see the wobble at a certain part of the video. My mandrel has evidently got a little bit of a bend in it. So we're going to get rid of that mandrel. I'm going to buy a new one because I, I sometimes like to turn on mandrels, especially if I'm turning, you know, a double barrel pin. Uh, sometimes it's easier to turn both together, finish together. It's a lot quicker. Um, however, between centers, 
this is what I've been doing with these uh, cigar pens, and it's been working fantastic. Um, I tried my best to finish it. You can see just a little bit of brass tube there, but uh, you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna attempt to fix. It. That's it for me on this one. Really sorry. Like I said, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, and today we lost. So we're gonna move on to the next one. Take care. Uh, oh, by the way, you are always welcome in my shop. You come back and see me again real soon, and have a great evening.